Hello there, this is Hans Forstner with Nafkin Engineering. The focus of this sound plan video is the mapping of measured noise data and how you can add measured data with predicted noise levels. So why is that of interest? Well, first of all, motive one could be that you just want to document the existing noise level for OSHA, MSHA requirements, and you just want to document what is status quo. A field measurement survey is conducted in a plant inside a building or in a community. And depending on the project, you may be interested in documenting various metrics, like an average LEQ, an L90, like ambient noise levels or the max levels, 500 hertz octave band, or whatever seems reasonable for your objective in the project. Motive two could be that you're developing a noise model for a new project and you're interested in comparing it with the existing noise environment. First of all, you're interested in the noise impact of the new project. So you create your 3D noise model and you predict the noise from your new sources into the community or to the property line. Now you want to compare the new project impact with the existing ambient noise levels. Depending on the noise assessment, it may be important to identify if the project will have a significant impact, if it's neglect neglectable, or if it increases the current ambient by more than 3, more than 5, more than 10 dB. Now with that, uh, another factor that needs to be considered is that your new project may be surrounded by other noise contributors, other plants, roads, railroads, and the ambient level may be fluctuating significantly uh, depending on how close uh, the sources are or how close the areas are to these sources. In this case, you collect ambient samples in various locations in the community. You can document the measurement data, just like in uh, the original plant or the motive one that I mentioned earlier. And then you add those measured data with the noise model predictions that you have for your new project. Then you finally add them up or you subtract them to get an overall increase. And to, so you're comparing the predicted levels with the adding ambient levels and compare it with the initial ambient level. So with that, you're getting the overall increase. You will see this is quite interesting. Soundplan has various tools to create uh, these graphics outputs and uh, that helps you to explain the noise impact before, after and the overall change. So let's get started. And uh, so here, let me minimize this here. So we open up uh, the geodatabase and in the geodatabase uh, we have uh, whatever noise model. And in this case, I'm going down here to a, a situation called measurement locations. So in this measurement location uh, setup, uh, all I do here is I create uh, points or like uh, coordinates in a certain sequence. In this case, I put the sequence in the order that I measured the area. So in this case, if I uh, check out the, um, the aerial view, that's a little bit hard to see here, but I start with point one, two, three, four, and go all around. So this these are the points where I measured the noise levels. In this case, LEQ levels, and uh, with five minute averages, I also have a, like an L90 to kind of get an uh, idea of the ambient level, and then of course the average noise level. Uh, when this is all completed, you can export the data here with the export, and I'm exporting it using the ASCII geometry export. So in this case, I will have um, these uh, basically a line def defined here with uh, basically a coordinate at every point uh, that I entered. And then I have an X, a Y, and an H. Now the H that I ent uh, enter here is always the, the point number. So they can vary in whatever sequence you're uh, measuring the points. So it doesn't really matter. But uh, in this case, I followed the, the sequence of the measurement and just assigned the uh, measurement number as my elevation. So here, if I open up, uh, for example, this uh, line, you can see that I just added the uh, measurement number in the um, height absolute uh, kind of, uh, input. So you export uh, the data 
and uh, it exports it into a, a tab separated file. Uh, you can import that file into Excel. So here we have Excel. So you import that and you're getting the data right here. So let me zoom in. So here, this is the data that you will basically import with a uh, tab separated uh, data set. And then after that, you just uh, copy and paste whatever data you have here. And that could be, in this case, it's three data points, an LQ of 500 hertz and one kilohertz data point. And this is it. And uh, in the top, you can, if you want, you can put a header there. So in this case, this is an X and Y. I have a point number and then here a header for whatever the information is that is coming after that in the column. So here I have LQ, 500 hertz and one octave, uh, one kilohertz octave. Um, this can be as many uh, rows as you want. So um, if you have statistical data or frequency data or uh, LQ uh, A weighted, B weighted, C weighted, unweighted, anything can be uh, put into this table. Now, when you complete that, you save this and you save it as a text uh, delimited uh, variable. So here we have a text delimit uh, um, variable and you save it back, back into the same project as your sound plan project, right? So in this case, my sound plan project is uh, VA2 Corona project demo. So this is where it uh, will be saved. All right, so the final step is how do we uh, put that into the graphics? So here I go back into the graphics of the sound plan and here we have um, a, a quite a, yeah interesting uh, kind of quad view uh, presentation. So let me uh, show that into the sheet components. So here we have a total of four maps. So here's map number one, uh, so map number one this is uh, basically just uh, measured uh, measured noise levels map. Then map number five here. This is uh, this is actually measured plus uh, measured plus plus predicted levels. And then here map number two. This is again just. Um, measured data so that would be equivalent to ambient and then finally here the map number three that's the bottom right uh, so this here is um, let's see all right so this here is increase uh, of ambient versus future all right. Okay, so how is this arranged? So here we have four maps. So in this map here, at top right, um, I go into the file selection manager and all I do here, I of course have the bitmap in the background uh, or the situation with the, the, um, the buildings and uh, uh, then we have the, the bitmap and then here I have the measurement map. So here we can see the measurement map. And in this case, I define um, the measurements. And here again, we can see the LQ, 500 hertz and one kilohertz. And then you select which column you want to, to load. Uh, we can interpolate uh, for the levels. So it program will triangulate and interpolate for the levels. And then we can select which a scale color scale we are using I use the scale from 40 to 90 and this will plot this map now in this case the map is defined um, in terms of like visualizing the measurements with points so here we have we're showing the points and we're showing uh, basically the value as text right here and we can um, let's see in the point uh, matrix we are basically showing the symbol. So we have here the symbol and uh, we use the color coding from uh, the base settings. Then from here we go to the next uh, example. Um, 
which is the map right here. So this, this is the same data, except it doesn't have the aerial in behind it. But it also interpolated the contours between those points. So the difference here is that in this map, uh, we are showing main intervals. So these are showing now, so I can uh, remove them. So here it basically just shows the contour lines, right? Um, but we can also turn on the contour lines again, all right? And then we can color code the contour lines if we want. All right. Uh, so if we want, don't fill the, the lines, then here we have just color-coded lines. All right. So there are different options here in terms of the visualization. Uh, we can uh, increase the font size of the, the DB values or DB labels. So here we have these labels. We can uh, put the... Um, the colors, uh, color of the, the lines here and behind it. So now we have color-coded uh, values here. So there are just lots of different uh, graphic uh, modifications that we can do here. So let me just change that back. And then here we have again color-coded uh, measured data. Now the next map that I show here is the bottom left. So here we are adding predicted level. So the prediction is here, in this case, a, a source that is in the back of this uh, um, uh, warehouse, or it's actually a, a supermarket. So there is a compressor in the, in the back of the building that uh, turns on uh, five minutes every hour. Uh, so here are the predicted noise levels. And what we do is we take those predicted noise levels and we add them up to the existing ambient. And to do that, again, uh, here in the File Selection Manager, we uh, load the situation, we load the bitmap, and then here we have a formula, which is a grid operation formula. So this grid, grid operation formula allows us to, uh, to overlay a grid map with measurement data. So here's the measurement map and here's the grid map. So we start with the grid map here at the top as a base file. And then we do an energetical adding. So this is a log adding up here. And we add that to this measurement map. So again, here the measurement map is kind of where we can select which, which data we want to select from. Okay. And then down here we can see the entire script. So grid noise map 15, first assessment, that's the daytime assessment. And then we, uh, we add, do a log adding plus plus with the uh, strip mall measurement data. All right. Okay. And then uh, we select the scale and here's our map. So again, here with this in terms of the map uh, presentation, uh, that's just the normal um, op um, grid operation map in this case, similar to the grid map. So here you have the, all the same settings in terms of the uh, base settings. Uh, how you want to uh, present that, how you want to overlay that over the bitmaps, and so forth. So now a uh, final map here is on the bottom right, and this is the overall increase to ambient level. So for this example, um, we are basically looking at the ambient levels that we measured up here. We are looking at the predicted, so we're adding the predicted plus the ambient and then we subtract the ambient out of it again. So with that, we see the overall increase. Now for this map, we're actually using a different scale. So we will use this scale here on the right-hand side. So this shows, um, yeah, basically no increase here, uh, less than 1 dB, 1 to 3 dB, and so on, all the way up to 27 dB. All right, so let's uh, look at the file selection manager. How do we do this in terms of the formula again? So this is the grid operation. Now, one difference here to the normal grid operation, this is a little bit more extended. So here we have an extended operation, formula operation up here. It's called extended. And then here we actually can write a script and we are basically saying we are using grid map number 151. So this is basically the prediction date type for this uh, 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 
uh, compactor. Then here we are adding with the plus plus the measure data. We put parentheses at the beginning and at the end and then we subtract the measurement data again. So that is an arithmetic subtraction with just the tip normal minus sign. right? And again here at the bottom we see the entire script right? and then when we click OK it will ask us which scale do we want to use. In this case I have a second scale. Um, we probably should change the name for that. Um, I click OK, I click OK and here we have now our uh, increase map or difference map. So we can zoom into this here. So you can see of course the biggest increases are close to, to the compactor. So the increases are up to yeah, 20, 20, 70 dB, uh, which is not surprising. But then behind that wall it drops down. So there the levels uh, go into the 7, 5, 7 dB range here behind the wall. Then here in the other area, so here again 5 dB, the turquoise is somewhere around 3 to 5 dB re uh, increase. So with that you can kind of get an idea of kind of what are the changes that, uh, that we can expect here. All right. So especially for CEQA assessment or any type of uh, environmental impact assessment, uh, you are interested to see how the new project compares to existing ambient. So it's not just about uh, meeting a certain noise limit. It's also about is it a significant change, especially if you already have quite a bit of uh, ambient noise impact there. So the new project may not significantly increase what is already there. So there might be already a fairly high noise environment due to roads or railroads or other plants. And, uh, and in that case, it's maybe still acceptable to add more noise if it's uh, less than three decibels or is barely in the range of kind where it's audible, right? Anyway, so this uh, concludes the, um, the uh, mapping of measurement data. Uh, thank you for listening. If you have any questions, uh, please uh, feel free to uh, leave a note uh, or send me an email. You can uh, contact me at uh, navcon.com. And um, yeah, I'm looking forward to uh, future videos. Thank you and bye for now.